Stop. Lashawan Kadash was written on the walls of 1 West 125th. The Lashawan Kadash mistranslation is supposed to be Shalawam. Why isn't Nathaniel teaching you the contrived Harlem Hebrew Aria taught him? Pleased to meet you, kids. Being brought up in an autocratic, highly centralized, authoritarian organization. Pleased to meet you, kids. I'm an adopted son of the father. That's Romans 815. We're trying to spread this message around the world. Why? Why do you need to spread the message to refugees in Tanzania? You will put them, whom you call Hamites, into eternal slavery once Yahweh sets up his racial caste system in the kingdom. Why would you need to travel to war-torn Syria just to tell them that when Yahweh Shai returns in 1999, I, I mean 2019, that they will be going immediately into chains? Did you know that the descendants of the slave trade were actually the Israelites in the Bible? You mean you didn't know that? For real? But it's written in the Bible. I know you have one of those. Where? Where is it written in the Bible that, quote, the descendants of the slave trade were actually the Israelites in the Bible? That phrase, or anything even remotely like it, is written anywhere in the Bible. In fact, the only place it is clearly written is the IUIC preset packet. I know your parents have one of those. It's like a comic book, except with less pictures. Haven't you ever read Deuteronomy chapter 28? Yes, I have heard Deuteronomy 28. I've also heard the One West Breakdown. It's a textbook case of eisegesis. Can you say eisegesis? It's Deacon Nithon's favorite word, eisegesis. The curses, the curses. We fit the curses. But haven't you heard Galatians 3, 13 through 14? It says that Christ has redeemed us from the curses order that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Wait, stop. You mean these pastors aren't teaching this? Wait, stop. You mean the teachers aren't telling you that the man who invented many of these doctrines now also teaches that Jermaine Grant is the God sent comforter? For real? <sighs> you do know those were Israelites on the slave ships, right? And where were those ships going? Egypt. Not the United States. That's Deuteronomy 28:68. That's Deuteronomy 2868. No, it's not. So why do you think they had Yoga on their necks during slavery? Because that's what people do who capture other people. They always bind them in fetters, against their own will so they can't escape. This isn't the Bible. You mean you didn't know that? We don't have to look in the transatlantic slave trade. Fetters are mentioned in 2 Chronicles 33.11, 36.6, and 2 Kings 25.7. It's in the Bible. I know you have one of those. There ain't no comic book. Really Speaking of comic books, haven't your teachers taught you yet how one day you'll have superpowers like the X-Men? That's right, you one day will be able to fly like Thor, except without a hammer. You can shoot laser beams from your eyes to melt Esau and his children. You'll be just like Superman, except you won't be an Edomite from Krypton who lives in Kansas on a farm. The next time you watch the latest Marvel movie, just think of yourself in the role of that superhero. Except for the so-called white skin, of course. We're not sure about Hulk, he's most likely an Edomite. You mean you didn't know that? It's on YouTube. I know you have YouTube. That's Deuteronomy 2848. No, it's not. Babies and young children were taken from their parents and sold to other slave owners. That's Deuteronomy 2848. No, it's not. This is sad that this happened. It's also sad that it still happens in places like Thailand. The Thai fulfill the curses. You think the Thai are Moabites, don't you? Why don't the Thai and slavery also fulfill the curses? Shouldn't the Thai and slavery be now considered Israelites by IUIC? The Thai fulfill the curses. And all these curses are assigned to identify who the Israelites are today. Wait, how do you know these curses are assigned to identify who the Israelites are today? That's Deuteronomy 28, No, it's not. That's not what that verse means. It's saying Israel will know Yahweh is keeping his word by enacting discipline upon his people when they neglect the covenant. Besides, Deuteronomy 28, 46 says, It shall be unto thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. If the curses are said to be a sign unto Israel forever, then how could she ever forget and not know who she was? The verse says nothing about Israel, somehow forgetting she was Israel, and all of a sudden thinking she was some other nation. That concept is nowhere in the scriptures at all. If it is, please show us one place in the Bible or it says the curses are assigned to identify the true Israelites supposedly forgot their ethnic identity. Please don't play Hebrew hopscotch and jump to Jeremiah 17.4. That's not what the verse means at all. 
Yeah, and if you use it that way, I'll make another video. That's not what the verse means at all. Why do you think we're getting killed on just now? Every day. That's Deuteronomy 28 and 50. No, that's Romans 3, 9 through 19. And while you're there, don't forget to read Romans 3, 20. So what are we saying? That you bless. Hispanic. And Native American. All that is your life. Wait, why are those groups mainly on the Western Hemisphere? Why do the Seminoles get their own tribe separate from the rest of Gad? The Seminoles' ancestors are the Muskegee Creek. So shouldn't they all be the same tribe on IUIC's 12 tribe chart? Boy, I sure do wish someone who actually knew Abba Bevins was an IUIC. Instead, IUIC has to rely on Nathaniel's innovations of what Aria received from Abba Bevins and an Afro-bearing angel in a gray suit. You mean you didn't know that? Don't worry, most adults in IUIC don't either. The history is in the Bible. That's the best thing I have heard yet. You should read the Bible. The history of the human race descended from Adam and Eve is in the Bible. Please don't say that the trees in the garden actually represent progenitors of other nations, because that'd be super weird and obviously a stretch from what Genesis is actually saying. So what are you waiting for? Go read it! It's time to wake up! Amen. Recognize you're a sinner needing repentance in the sight of a holy God, and fall upon the grace only the gospel of Jesus Christ can provide. Well, it's been fun. Until next time, kids, Shalom.